And now we're recording. Fantastic. Let's give this another try. Welcome everybody back to the Sustainiacs or for the first time. I'm Michael Vincent. I'm always the Sustainiac and my guest Sustainiac this week is Jesse Langley and he is CEO at Lotus Sustainables in case he didn't know. But Jesse, hey, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. We've had a couple bumps getting this together, but uh, it's uh, as is life. I've had worse. It is. It is. Life happens. It's happening right now. You know, <laughs> all 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 around us. Uh, I'm not recording this on my phone as a message to anybody this time or anything crazy like that. Um, so we're in great shape. So Jesse, uh, let's talk about uh, what's going on, man. I mean, we're we're here to talk about sustainables and sustainability and all kinds of different technologies and and ways to. Uh, you know, solve the issues of waste and waste plastic and circular economies and certainly replacements, bio plastics, et cetera, all that other kind of stuff. What are you guys doing at, uh, at Lotus? Give us the loadout. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. We're, we're super excited. The work we're doing at Lotus is, is mission driven. So our mission is to eliminate single use plastic bags from shopping. So we're very hmm. focused in that space and to date, we've been able to divert almost 5 billion plastic bags from landfills. So we're we're making some headway, but there's a long path ahead and uh, really excited about being able to do that. Yeah. Five billion. So do you, do you know what that is in, in, as far as like a percentage of a greater volume or anything like that? Because it sounds awesome and huge, but it's really not, is it's it? It's really I mean, not. it's yeah. awesome, but it's not like it doesn't, it hasn't solved the entire, it's not like, not, Hey, we're done. Yeah. Solution done. Right. Not even close. You're totally right. And you know what? I don't know the overall percentage of what that yeah. means. Um, and you're right. It sounds like a big number, but it's not even a blip on the radar as to what's yeah. and what's ahead. Right. Well, I, I put out a thing yesterday about plastic bags in California and, and uh, because this, you know, you know, we, we ban things without a solution for the other side. And sometimes, you know, you have these unintended consequences and things get a bit worse until you go, OK, wait a minute we need to add this to part to the solution. Right. And he's I'm not saying anybody's doing anything bad or, or wrong. We just learn as we, as we do things. Right. And so it was like 231 million or 231,000 tons of plastic bags going into, you know, landfills. And, you know, it, there's, it's really hard to explain to people what that is, but just go pick up a, a plastic bag at a Walmart and then imagine how many of those it would take to make, 231,000 tons. I mean, I could put like 40 of them on top of your head. You wouldn't even know they're there. <laughs> right? It, it's so, so light. And I think you bring up a good point, Michael. Like, so it, at bringing California back into the picture, you know, so that was really the start of the, of the mission was back in 2017 when, when California and place that ban on single-use plastic bags. And what you saw yeah. that unintended consequences, what, what plastic did then is they just made thicker plastic bags and deemed them reusable. And the reality is that we ended up adding more tonnage to plastic bags being thrown away because of that. So there is a new yeah. law going into effect this next year that is banning those bags now finally. So those unintended consequences We've now right, righted the ship here, you know, seven years later as to how to effectively say, no, that that's not, that wasn't the intent. How do we, how yeah. do we really put a real solve in place that does actual, actual, you know, do what we're, we're all looking to achieve? Yeah, it's, it's a do over. And we've seen this and it's happened in other states as well, where it just kind of it doesn't work because you've got to get the people to understand that that reusable bag is something they need to be reusing all the time. But you also have to have some way of getting rid of that bag at its end of life, because even those reusables don't last forever. Uh, and if you're not recycling that flexible film, then, you know, you may not be sending X number a day, but the weight can be the same because you're sending one that's 10 times the weight, you know, a tenth of the time that hasn't solved anything, right? Right. So you, you have to you have to have those different solutions. So what is your solution there at, uh, at, at what you're doing at Lotus? Yeah, you, you know, you, you said you said something that that's important is you, you, you need to be able and want to use those bags again and again. Yeah. And so that's what we've solved for. Like what what are the features that want you to use these bags? So as part of and I'll take one of our products, which was our first product that we started with, which is called the Lotus Trolley Bag. 
So it's a four cart, it's a four bag system, opens up in your cart like a like an accordion, has different pockets. There's a cooler bag, there's a pocket for your egg, your wine, your your flowers, whatever it may be. So the functional uses around organization as well as being able to then it all rolls up. Each of them are Velcroed together. You can easily put that in your car and then it rolls up easily like a yoga mat. And so it's easily compactable, easy to carry. So those are the kind of things that, hey, we can't just rely on making a bag for bag sake for the for sustainability sake. We need to make sure we're we're making it that is really going to have other functions for people around organization and effectiveness and use so they don't forget their bags when they go into the store and they remember them to bring them in. Yeah, the solution has to be as good at minimum, and you've taken it many steps further. I, I've I've looked at it, and the trolley bag is is, is amazing because it, it adds value, obviously, to it, which is what you want to do, right? I mean, you want to people got have to want this solution, not go, oh well, crap, I can't use plastic bags. I guess I'll use this, right? That that doesn't work. Not not. Now you're now you're you're relying on altruism, which we all know fails because people see shiny objects all the time and they're diverted and they forget about the original mission. Right. hundred percent. Right. So we can't just we can't just lean on sustainability and the actions of of us all wanting to have a healthier planet, which we all do. But we need to make sure that there's steps in place to make it uh, a lot easier for people to make that decision. Yeah. If you make it convenient, you make it attractive um, and you make it affordable and you make the business a viable actual business model that doesn't rely on, you know, charitable gifts to stay afloat. Now you've actually has a solution, right? right? right. And that's what you've got there. So the trolley bag is, I, I, you know, I looked at it and we, we, you know, we discussed, we actually talked before the show people, if you haven't realized that type of stuff. Uh, but um, it's, it's super cool because it's got, it, it, it can, it sits in the back of your car Right. You can put it in your trunk or, you know, under your lift gate or your 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 hatchback, whatever you want to call it. And then but it also sits in the trolley or the shopping cart quite nicely because it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, file folders that you put in your desk drawer. That's right? a great that's a great analogy. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. I, I love it. But you have the other stuff as well for because, you know, those are. I, I, when I go to the when I go to the store, Jesse, we'll just stay on this topic for a minute because when I go to the store, you know, I'll go and and I won't use the the plastic bags for like the produce. You know, I'll grab an onion and throw it in my cart. I'll grab a couple of tomatoes, throw them. You know, I don't throw them because I want them to not be bruised and, and that type of stuff. But I don't see the point in putting it in this plastic bag and then putting it in another plastic bag and then getting home and throwing out two plastic bags, right? Right. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. And sometimes they look at me like I'm a, a bit strange because, you know, here comes the conveyor belt down the, the thing and they're checking it out. And then all of a sudden there's just all this loose produce <laughs> just thrown on, thrown on, on, on the thing. And I look at them and say, I'm going to wash it before I before I eat it. I, I promise you. <laughs> yes. But I don't need the plastic bags. Right. Yeah. But you have a solution for even that, too, which is super cool. We do, you know, as we continue to innovate in the space, and that's one thing that we really uh, continue to strive to do is innovate in this space. And uh, so we came out with the reusable produce bag, and that is, um, you know, three different sizes of it. It's made from a really strong material. It's really high quality. It allows us to um, really effectively uh, have consumers use it for all of their produce needs, right? And so um, we currently sell those obviously online and in stores and such. And that's continuing to be more and more the behavior that we're seeing and that we hope to see. And, and also, again, as, as, as mentioned, legislation is continuing to move the needle on those things as well. But it's, it's all about the high quality construction and the type of materials. There's some, you know, the, the frustrating piece is when a, a product is made and after it's supposed to be reusable, but then after 10 times it falls apart. Right. And the, the yeah. resources that went into producing that are more harmful than if someone used 10 single use plastic bags. So it's a, it's a, it's a reverse, right? So that's why we really pride ourselves on the quality of construction and the features that we put into these products. And we found actually, Michael, that people are using our produce bags for so many other things, right? They're, putting their toiletries in it when they travel. They're um, <laughs> washing their delicates with it. They're putting their kids' Legos in it so they're not all over the floor. Like, it's so awesome to hear our, our 
our consumers that are out there that are telling us uh, all the great features that they're using it for because it's a quality quality product that's constructed well and they have a lot of other uses for it. It, it absolutely is. And, you know, the first thing that crossed my mind when I saw it was like, I got to get one of those so I can like contain all my golf balls in my golf bag. <laughs> there actually. you go. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <'Cause laughs> I could just pull it out, set it in a cart and then, you know, it, and it probably holds about a dozen golf balls, which is what I need to get through, a, you know, your regular par five. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> so I have one bag for each hole and I'm good. <laughs> There you go. There you go. You know, but uh, yeah, no, it, it's fabulous because, you know, even the alternative, you, you have to have that alternative, like we said, right? You, you, you can't expect people to be sustainable or to recycle or to reuse or to upcycle or to reduce unless there's another option. And it has to be an option that, you know, in our society doesn't cause pain or disruption or very little of it because that's just the way our culture is. There's others around the world. Well, they'll, they'll use it even, you know, they'll go through the inconvenience to be a little bit more mindful of the environment. And that's just the way they grew up, the, 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 the culture as it did because of, you know, their society, but also the environment they, they grew up in, right? But not so in most of, you know, North America. It's just the way it is, right? Exactly. So, you know, it's a behavioral change, right? And that, that's, yeah. as we all know, that's, that's tough to change. But the reality is, like you said, having that solution that is there and having other external forces that are help moving it, you know, just that consumer behavior, the awareness that consumers are becoming more and more today is obviously, you know, some more of the ESG goals that are pushing legislation, just overall areas that are helping us, us being the United States, catch up honestly, with most of the developed world in this lane. So are, are there, so you attach uh, a certain amount of, of plastic bags reduced or eliminated from use, which therefore keeping it out of going into the environment, obviously, um, per unit sold. Is that how you're, you're calculating those things? Exactly. We, we use the kind of the, the standard um, debt out there around a family of four uses 1200 plastic bags per year and help us yeah. put that into the kind of the. Formula okay. So if they used your product for a year, there's 1200 bags taken out of it. Exactly. Is, is the assumption, right? That's, that's, yeah, I gotcha. That makes a ton of sense. Does that equate to carbon or have you looked at that? Because you know, production of your bags versus carbon, et cetera. Do you, have you looked at that? Yeah, uh, you know what? That's a great question. And there's there's a lot more data that we're going to start diving deeper into to yeah. those things. Uh, you know, that is a big part of our mission. So that is important to us and, and something that we will look at those offsets. Also, the type of, you know, what type of materials are some of those bags being constructed with? And again, we have, we have right. a product, broader product line than just those two that I mentioned. But, you know, yeah. is there RPET that we're able to use? And so now we're taking plastic bottles out of the system. And so we, we're kind of, you know, really, really hitting it at both sides. And so those are areas we're continuing to, to find success and look for. Yeah. So you're bringing in the recycled content into these into these 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 bags. Right. That's that's fantastic. Is it? Uh, and well, I mean, we don't have to get into that stuff. Most people I'll geek out over what type of materials you can use inside those bags <laughs> that, that you're doing that, that you're making. But that's 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 really interesting. So did you just I mean, why you know, grocery bags? Just you you saw that you saw the need and you jumped into Lotus or how did you how did how did this come about? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I, I actually grew up in a grocery store. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, the year oh, I was wow. born, my, my, my parents built a grocery store, a, a kind of, a, you know, a, a mid, mid-sized grocery store. So that was a oh, big really? part of my life. Yes. Um, wow. So I don't know where that plays in the overall equation of, uh, you know, in, inserted into the DNA. But uh, the founders of Lotus, uh, Jen and Farzan, founded the company about seven years ago. I joined the team about five years ago. And the reason I joined okay. the team is, one, the mission, you know, really focused on how I can up-level people on the planet and, uh, you know, just what I can help bring and add value to. And so I've had opportunities in the past to, to do work for people on the planet. And this really aligned and, and have an amazing team to work with. And so... It's, it's been, it's been a joy for sure, Michael. So how, how has the adoption gone? I'm interested because 
of the way our society is built and, and, you know, you, you can, it's important for people to adopt these type of things and to understand that they're out there and not to just think, Oh, well, there's other people, you know, getting this done. Is, is the adoption stronger? I imagine it probably is in California. And, and if that's so, is it because that's where you're, you know, kind of grew up or started, started introducing this or is it because of the mandates? Because the convenience of this, uh, I mean, we, you know, I, I told you when I first met you, we're going to buy these. So we're using them, and, but we're in Tennessee. And, and Tennessee could not care less if you throw away plastic bags, apparently, <laughs> for some reason, you know. But still, it's a way better option. It's just easier to shop with these things. Yes. It's way easier. So yeah. is that adoption happening outside of that just because of the pure functionality and it's just a better way to do it rather than it's totally environmentally better? Exactly. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good point. You know, and, you know, just speaking towards adoption, like, yes, the trend lines are in our favor. If, yeah, I imagine they are. Like that, that is moving it and for, from some of those external factors that I mentioned, but also just the reality with it. And it's not just a, you know, I would say it's a little obviously started on the coast, the east and west coast from Washington, Oregon, California, and then over from Vermont, New York, New Jersey. Like, so those were some of the leading states to continue to ban plastic bags. Um, right. But, you know, Michael, we've also, along that adoption, we've run into other other forces that have, have pushed back. And I'll give you an example. COVID. Okay. Our, I don't know yeah. if you remember, reusable bags were banned during COVID. Like, you were not yeah. allowed to bring... So our product was literally banned to be used, which I don't know how many products out there that were had, were put in that situation. But it just... But I point this out only to show you where big plastic gets involved and how oh. what type of, you know, pseudoscience gets presented at first and later proved wrong that this... Right. This is part of a part of what's going to spread COVID, right? And so when I, I, I bring that up as the non-linear path of adoption, because you do have these things that come up in place, um, but the reality yeah. is that uh, the adoption, the growth in this sector is is really strong, and we see it because we also are in the business of not only making our branded product. You know, we've done a great job of really, you know, representing ourselves as a certified B Corp as a brand that has expertise, knowledge, authenticity, high quality construction, but we're also in the space of providing private label bags for all types of brands out there as well, right? And so that's where we see more and more adoption coming is from these other brands, retailers, others out there that are, are moving in that direction. So that's super encouraging to see that because that's not a necessarily a Yes, it's a consumer talking, but it is the retailer or brand making the decision around how they want to treat sustainability. Yeah, I can see it as an add-on option when I'm building out my next Subaru too. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm really yes. not kidding. I'm, you know, because you, you look at you know you can get the you can get the you know your 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 kayak carrier on the top or your your the and you can get your 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 you know storage cover and stuff like that. Why not a shopping rack with with stuff in, inside there right i don't know hey, uh, i'm in there you, go. you can take that you can take that idea i got it. It. thank you <laughs> you're welcome I'll, I'll i'll send you a bill later for, please for that one <laughs> so but one of the things i want to talk about as well is i mean you're you're obviously mission-based or, or you know driven as 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 a human being which is great and i want to highlight a bit of that because you know, part of what I'm trying to do is, is show people that, look, sustainability is a business and it, it can be a, a new business, like a, a new technology or a new new product based on need, like Lotus Sustainables or, you know, sustainability efforts within your existing legacy business, even if be a steel manufacturer or an energy manufacturer, obviously that's a big one, et cetera. No matter what you're making, even plastic uh, plant uh, planters sustainability does not is not an anchor or a drag on profits or growth it can be a a, a, a catalyst that explodes that growth right and yes. if you're thinking about those things and even if you take that uh, one half step outside of your business to do something um, you know you can impact you can impact the world. If we all do it, we can impact the world tremendously. You know, let's all hold hands and sing Kumbaya. 
but you, you've got a whole bunch of other things that you're involved with and you're involved with right right now, even even with it at Lotus. So can, can we talk about a couple of those things? Yeah, like you definitely. Know, conscious sure. capitalism in San Diego, et cetera, yes. that you've been through? Happy to. Yeah. So, you know, one of the opportunities I'm uh, lucky to be part of is I co-chair an organization called Conscious Capitalism uh, in the San Diego chapter here. And Conscious Capitalism, just to back up a little bit, is a is really a philosophy and movement that was founded by John Mackey and Raj Sodia. John is obviously the founder of Whole Foods. And it was really, you know, based on a, on a premise of elevating humanity through business. And there's four kind of main key uh, tenets of this movement. And the first one is, is having a higher purpose, right? What is that North Star that you're always focused on that's not just about, you know, pulling out, pulling out driving profitability. Uh, second one is stakeholder orientation, recognizing that we have all of these different players within this from employees and suppliers and consumers to planet Earth, the shareholders, right? Like, how do we all work together as part of this orientation? The third one being uh, conscious leadership. So leaders that are really embracing that ecosystem and how to make decisions and, and keeping a, a purview out for, for everyone. And then the fourth and final one is a conscious culture, right? These are the these are the values, the underlying eco, you know, system that the company operates with. And so those are the four main tenets. And those by when used can really help drive business as a force for good. And so there's a lot of efforts and businesses that operate with those tenets and really help elevate humanity literally through the business actions that are being done. Yeah. And that's, and that, you know, back. Uh, so Alfred North Whitehead, business professor at Columbia university, long, long time ago, wrote a bunch of books and one of them was adventures and ideas. And uh, one of those statements in there was that, you know, society is only as great as the importance it's men and women of business place on their contributions to that society. And that's what Mackie's talking about, yeah, right? Exactly. Is that, you know, there's nothing wrong with capitalism, but if, if it's, you know, extract, use and waste in, in all senses of it from raw materials to, you know, the human intelligence and labor, et cetera, that's no good. Right. right. <laughs> it, 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 it needs to not be just a way for you to extract wealth from my wallet and put it in your wallet, but to actually create wealth in so many different ways, social wealth, governance, wealth, environmental wealth and all that type of thing through that business. If that's the goal, then we're great because there's so many nascent technologies or they're not even nascent anymore. There's so many developing technologies now. And in my space that I spent 30 plus years in logistics. There's so many things that are being done that I, I just, I, I'm like, why? why? I don't understand. Why does the average consumer have to have their toothbrush delivered within two hours? I don't understand. It doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help anybody. It's bad for the planet. It's, it, it teaches us just total consumption and convenience and laziness. There's absolutely no advantage to it whatsoever other than, you know, you've got more market share than the other guy. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. And there's a there's a limit to that. Those external factors, as you mentioned, like the planet can only hold so much. Right. And it can only yeah. be, be taken from so much. And so it's really driving business model, driving business models that, you know, not only benefit the environment, but also enhance social equity, equity, economic resilience. Right. And if you're if you're taking a lens by doing your business where you're not just focused on you know, squeezing as much uh, profit out as possible. And you're looking at everyone in the equation uh, as, as, as part of that team that you need to help support. It really becomes a win-win because you end up de-risking your business even that much more, right? Because and I'll be happy to tell you during COVID, guess whose product was on, on the containers? <laughs> guess, guess who got front of the line from my suppliers and such, right? Because that relationship and being able to partner in a way where, they, we, when you do good by others, they'll do good by you. Right. And so that's really that yeah. sentiment that continues to help show that same thing happens with your employees, right? If you build a culture where you're treating your, your employees with respect and as human beings and not just driving it all out of it, 
then it, it really changes the dynamic and how we can all operate, be happier, have more, more productive businesses, and at the end of the day, be successful for, again, all the stakeholders. Yeah, more sustainable businesses. <laughs> right? Exactly. I mean, and you're talking about leadership that needs to evolve as society evolves because everything that you were talking about, you know, as far as, you know, working with your employees, treating your employees, et cetera, that type of thing. When I was a kid, I, you know, that was not a big thing. And yet, you know, our parents, they were, you know, years were entrepreneurs. Mine, mine worked for somebody, but they never changed jobs. Right? And then people started to change jobs all the time. Right? That, that became a thing. It was like, oh, you, you don't work there for 20 years or 30 years and retire or whatever anymore. And, and I think that it was slow for leadership to, to start to figure out why that was happening and how expensive that actually is. And now, as you know, the, the younger generations become more and more, you can see it in, in the numbers, they want sustainable packaging. They'll buy a little this, they'll spend up to three to 10% more for a more sustainable, et cetera. That also translates into the workspace. And so as a leader, you've got to be conscious and evolve with all those type of issues as well, right? Not only with your product, but how, how you're operating that business, right? 100%. You have to be truly intentional with how you develop the culture at your business. It's, it's imperative that that is part of the equation. And again, we've seen our, the, the business environment change drastically again at, as we have more of a remote workforce. So how does that, how does that even come together? How do you look, you be it remote or hybrid or what that looks like, but you're correct. And that also this next generation is much more aware and they're, they have different priorities than, than our previous generations as to what it is. Yeah. It's not just all about how much money can I make at my job. It's these other factors of, well, how am I, how am I being treated? What are some of the other things? What's the mission I'm on? What's the purpose? Why am I working here? Right. And I think also, again, not using COVID as, a, as, a, as another point, but the reality is I think a lot of people during COVID stepped back and looked at the balance of their life, right? Not only from how they're, how they're spending their day, but what the work they're doing and what the mission they're on, what they're contributing yeah. to or not contributing to. And yeah. I believe that's a trend that's gonna, gonna stay hopefully forever, right? And, and definitely this, this next generation uh, has really made that more and more of a priority as to what they're interested in doing and where that focus comes from. Yeah. And I think that, but you know, I think a, a lot of that attitude and I think it's interesting to explore, but I think it in some ways liberated the, those thoughts and those, those desires in the, um, in, in the previous generations, <laughs> yes. like I, I'm almost a baby, baby boomer. Right. But right. You know, as we were coming out of COVID, I went from total logistics to emission-based plastics recycling and taking my knowledge to do better because I was like, wait a minute, I can do better than just extracting money out of this and pretending like, hey, I'm doing great for the entire world and I'm a national hero because I know how to coordinate uh, you know, materials moving across the country. Right. I mean, it, it is incredibly important and I don't want to take anything away from it, but um, you know, that, that that's going to happen regardless of whether you're mission based or not. That's not exactly what we're talking about when it's like uplifting the community. <laughs> right? right. Those are very, very important things. Don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, just because you're in logistics doesn't mean you're a hero. There's a there's a bunch of other things to be done. Right. Well, let me ask you what what drove you to that decision, Michael? Like, what was that that took you down that path? You know, it was, it was really, um, things were, things were changing and, uh, the importance of, it was, it was really the, the, the importance of family and those around me and the fact that, Hey, you know what? Everything could change for the worse real fast. It right. became a reality. It became more of a reality. And I think, you know, growing up through, uh, detente and the Cold War and all that kind of stuff. And when, you know, the Scorpions winds of change and all that kind of stuff actually meant something as a song. Uh, it, it, it really brought me back to those younger years where, you know, you, you really, you know, live for live for today was like true because, you know, half the Air Force was required to be in the air at all times during those times and stuff like that. And the football could be opened up and buttons pressed at any moment. 
um, it was reality, right? That, hey, this could all end like in an hour. In fact, it may be over. We're not sure. <laughs> we, we won't know for another eight minutes whether we're still here or not, right? right. Uh, that, that type of thing. And it, and it brought it back on, hey, wait a minute, this, this actually occurred. And um, yeah, I think that was really the inspiring thing to go, wait a minute, I can do something else different to help move this thing forward. Right. Recognizing that our time here is, 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 is limited and unknown and the, yeah. being, being present as to what you can do to help during that time. hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So the, the other thing you, you want to talk about rise Costa Rica or. Yeah. You know, so it, that brings in a good point. A lot of the work that I try to focus around is, is, is the next generation education. Right. Uh, yeah. and so a, a couple things that I'm involved with are, are really how do we help bring students into this pathway around um, around purpose driven business? Uh, so I've had an opportunity to help um, get a school off the ground down in Costa Rica that's focused in this type of lane of entrepreneurial thinking and really grounded into nature and those kind of pieces. And then as part of that next step work we do at Conscious Capitalism is we started an internship program here in San Diego, an impact internship. For, for university students to line into. And we work with other companies that are, that are social innovators, that are B Corps, that are really purpose-driven in their efforts here in San Diego. And then we have a paid internship. Um, we pay those interns a living wage and allow them to work with these different companies. And that helps support so many different, again, stakeholders in the system, right? Here we're yeah. We're, we're growing San Diego as a region, as a city, as one of America's finest. We are taking students who have an interest into doing purpose-driven business and giving them the fastest path of networking, of experience, of being engaged in businesses like this. And at the same time, we're taking businesses and saying, hey, here's your talent pool that's in your backyard. Let's help nurture and grow them so these are your future employees, right? So. That, that's a kind of an overall uh, mission and ecosystem. And at Lotus, we've had the opportunity this last semester to have one of those interns, and it was just a, a phenomenal experience. And so that's really kind of uh, the goal around having those different elements involved. Yeah, that's tremendous. I, 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 love, that. I love that effort. There was a, uh, an auto body, auto body company, Caliber Collision, that's nationwide, 1,700 stores, and they, and they do uh, a very similar thing with their – uh, internships, right? You can come in and knowing nothing about auto body and make a great, uh, a great living. And, and they're, you know, they, they invest that money into raw talent and developing it and intelligence rather than marketing to try and steal the best from somebody else. <laughs> right. And, and what they found is that that investment starts to pay off fairly quickly. Um, by by bringing those people in there instead of you know teaching that talent and uplifting the the the, the society around them and the people around them, uh, which is tremendous. I I applaud you for that. That is that's tremendous. We did the same thing at Tropical Shipping, uh, sponsoring um, citizenship, etc., and bringing people into into the business. So that that's right. fantastic. And, and, you know, we have a great opportunity as we mentioned before how this generation is aligned already. Right, they already have a lens towards this direction. So the more yeah. that we can continue to cultivate uh, that, that desire, we really have an opportunity to, to change the paradigm. And, and you mentioned before, capitalism isn't bad. It's, it's, there's bad actors that have definitely used it in, in, in the wrong way, but it, it is a system that can work if it's used effectively and it's used with yeah. a little bit different lens. And so that's what really kind of through all these efforts is how do we help really look at doing business a different way that, that again, isn't a new theory. It's out there and it's it obviously intentionally was, was driven that way. And it's only through others that it kind of got off track, but that doesn't mean it, it can't still move back into a system that's really effective for all stakeholders. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it's a growth thing. It's these, it's these small steps that become big steps, right? One person as an intern grows into two to four to you know, and it just exponential and one business sees you, then they, then they start to do it. And then 10 more businesses, et cetera. And that's the way to do it. And I liken it a lot to what, what I'm trying to do and but what you're trying to do at Lotus or doing at Lotus as well. Right. It's, it's not 
hey, problem solved. Go back to sleep, everybody, and ignore it. Just, you know, follow the line and, and, and go on. We've, it's all solved. No, this is a great example of how to move forward towards those, those, uh, those solutions. Um, and if it can be done with these plastics, then it can be done with, with other types of materials, et cetera. Even wood, uh, regenerating wood or, or reclaiming wood um, and, and, ener and energy quite frankly, yes. and water and, and many other things. So I applaud what you guys are doing there. What's, what's next on the table, man? Is it, it's, it, is it, I mean, not that Lotus needs anything or you do, you're doing fantastic stuff. More of it is a fantastic answer, but is, is there a, is there a, a, a plan you can share at, at, for Lotus or, or moving forward? Yeah. Thank you, Michael. I, I mentioned it a bit earlier, but you know, we've continued to broaden the, the work effort at Lotus around the different types of bags that we are, you know, partnering with, with different brands and retailers. So, you know, it's not just a polypropylene type of production. We've got, you know, organic cotton and jute, other renewable resource bags, looking at RPT, right? All of these different opportunities um, are really there as a, as a portfolio for different companies that we're working with because, Obviously, when we started Lotus, our focus was just in grocery stores, right? We had a, we had a grocery yeah. bag system and a produce bag system. But again, we've taken all of our, our knowledge, expertise, relationships, authenticity, um, and really, you know, expanding that. So, you know, our, our opportunity in the future in which we're, which we're acting on is really working with other brands and retailers on how we can help service their bag needs, right? And what, mm. how that shows up. And, and, you know, this is coming from uh, quality and, and experience and expertise, right? We're not going to necessarily, if they want a certain bag that's at, at a price point that doesn't make sense to have quality construction, we're not going to make it right. Like someone yeah. else will, but we're not going to, we're not going to do it at a point where we're doing harm. And that sometimes happens. And so our focus is making sure that we're coming in as a trusted solution advisor uh, as these different entities are making decisions on the types of bags that they're looking to help put forth because the intent, the desire, right, with all of these is to do well, right? They want to do it. That's not like they, they go in to try to try to say like, well, how do I just check the box and get out of here, right? They, they are looking for that information and knowledge. So that's where a lot of our focus continues to grow. So we have a opportunity for a huge impact around other brands outside of our own as well. Yeah, for, 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 for sure. And, and there, there, I mean, there, there are that will not jump on board until they absolutely have to, there just are, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's, that's a shame, but it, it is the way it is. But, um, you know, but I applaud what you guys are doing there and I, and I, and I wish you all the best and it's tremendous. And, and thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having You've me. Almost, this has been fun. Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. 40 minutes goes by like, boom. <laughs> it really does. But hey, we're enjoying your products and everybody else should check out Lotus. Is it Lotus.com? Is that what it is? Lotus-sustainables.com. That's right. Lotus-sustainables.com. Check them out. They're very, they're very cool. You'll love them. I, I, I do. Because we were using a similar product, but it wasn't nearly as good as this. I mean, you've, you've nailed it as far as, you know, reduce, reuse, and making it much more convenient and a better product to entice people to actually do it. You've, you've nailed it on all fronts and I applaud that. Thank you so much. It's Thank you, great. Michael. I appreciate those words. You're, you're, you're welcome. They're, they're sincere. Um, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and downloading uh, the Sustainiacs. We'll see you next time. Peace and love.